What's going on guys? So this one is kind of a universal educational experience. Um, over the past few months at my job I'm at, I'm at a lawn and garden place. Service manager, uh, do a lot of stuff with small engines, lawn equipment, etc, etc. One of the issues we've been dealing with more and more and more lately, and this also goes for us guys in the automotive world, is what ethanol fuel is doing to our fuel systems. Uh, typically our cars, you know, within the past 10, 15 years, maybe late 90s, they started using a lot of materials that were very, very uh, resilient to alcohol. Mind you, alcohol, ethanol, E85, E10 is a great fuel. There's nothing wrong with using it. Yes, you may see a little bit less uh, fuel economy when you're running E10. Obviously, you're probably going to see maybe a 15% drop in fuel economy if you're running E85 if you have a flex fuel vehicle. But the one thing that is really cool about E85 is it makes a hell of a race fuel. It's 105 octane. If you build a fuel system designed to withstand the uh, storage issues with E85, you won't have a problem with it. Most of us with our cars, trucks, race cars, yada, 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 we're constantly driving them. And when we put them away, we generally drain all the fuel out of it or we put straight gasoline in it so you don't have a problem with storage. The problem with small engines is, if you look closely, this Briggs is a, uh, this is a, a 92. And it doesn't have that many hours on it. And I can tell that by just looking at the gaskets, looking at the ceiling surfaces, or this thing has not been through too many heat cycles. Um, but I want to show, and I got some background light, is just look at the corrosion on the tube, the fill tube. And then look at all the, there's a lot of rust. I, I showed, I made the video the other day with all the rust in the fuel tank. The tank is still marinating in toilet bowl cleaner. But I'm going to take the diaphragm apart here. This is a common issue with these small engines. You know, people are like, well, it'll fire up on starting fluid, but it won't stay running. Typically, it's because the diaphragm fails. And previously, uh, before the mandated uh, ethanol, you generally would never have an issue. You know, you could put your engine away, you could put your car away, you can put your rototiller away, six months to a year, whatever. The gas can turn into varnish, it can turn into orange, you know, Kool-Aid, reek to high heaven, and it would still run and it would not destroy your fuel system. Nowadays, we're finding, and we see newer units too, whether it's snowblowers, lawnmowers, whatever. I mean, brand new units right off the, uh, right out of the, the crate, and the fuel, and they, they won't run. Because the carburetor is full of what we call applesauce. It's a little pry action here on the corner. Did I miss a screw? It's being stubborn. Usually you got to work these pretty carefully. Uh, this thing wants to be stubborn. But long story short, um, it's like, what do we do about it? I mean, we're kind of screwed. Wow, this thing is really stuck on there. Usually they just pop right off. It's like glued on there. And obviously with the carburetors, the old ones were made out of like a zinc pop metal type alloy. These, the last of the, the uh, pulse jets were strictly aluminum. And you don't want to destroy the gasket mating surfaces by prying it apart. I might have to give a little tap tap action here. But I want to peek inside. With a little bit of persuasion, I got it to come apart. You know, here's the plate on the diaphragm here. You have a, like an orifice jet, like you can see how, where the jet runs and then it comes here and it's all covered in this gray, green, marine-like corrosion. Think of putting a piece of brass underwater, salt water, you know, it turns green. Think of the Statue of Liberty. So I'm gonna have to run a wire through these jets and then looking at the diaphragm itself, and you got to be careful because there's a yeah, this one's shot. So I wouldn't stay running. 
and then you got the ring and the spring. Just don't lose these parts, you need them. I'm going to have to rebuild this carburetor and what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take the fuel line off. For the longest time they would put a restrictor in these carbs. I wouldn't say a restrictor, but it was like a swirl inhibitor. It was like a, it was like a twisted piece of aluminum. And they'd put it in there to encourage a swirl. I'm going to take the jet out of the side. So if you ever get a new, like, the new, like the Chinese China Freight knockoff engines they shove on the new snowblowers, we're seeing about 10 of them bad boys a week. And they're all for the same thing. They won't run. They all have a orifice jet like this. Here, once you pull the float bowl off, you'll see the the jet, and, and a lot of times you pull the bowl off and it's like full of applesauce. Seriously, if the fuel sits for more than a year, it will turn into like this nasty applesauce. So I'm going to have to run a wire into this jet here. I'm going to have to remove the fuel uh, pickup tube and clean this out because you know it's all full of crap. And I'd have to see if I can get a jet. See, the jets are made out of aluminum. Trying to see if she'll focus. I don't know if that point's correct. A lot of times it has to be a very fine point. But it's all kinds of full of crap. I'm gonna have to, well at work we have an ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna have to give that a shot. Put this in there and boil it out. Typically works on the older carburetors. On the, new, on the newer ones, not so much. If you have a unit with a severe fuel contamination that's destroyed, your castings and you're trying to boil it out and then you get the unit running and then all it does is surge or even like the needle and seat won't hold and it'll just leak it'll drip it's it's disgusting you have to buy a new carburetor so that was my little short video here I'm gonna get this bad boy running here in a, here in a few weeks I need to uh, flush the fuel tank out and then I'm gonna rebuild the carburetor it's all it's gonna take I shot starting fluid and it fired right up so the long block's healthy. Everything's healthy about it. Just the fuel system was turned to gunk. Uh, just uh, some important information, especially with it being late November. We're getting ready to put our toys away. Make sure you're using a good fuel stabilizer, and make sure you run uh, run the fuel stabilizer through the system. Take it for one last ride with it in it, and uh, there you go.